Hi folks, let's model up the Jimmy Duresta ice pick. This is how I learned CAD as a self-taught machinist. You find stuff sitting on your desk and model it up. First thing, right click on the file name, new component, we'll do the, call it the handle, sketch polygon, circumscribed polygon, fancy name for hex or multi-sided. I'll click on this plane, pick a point, drag out, and just place it. I don't care about the dimension yet. Now I'll add the dimension, D on your keyboard, click once, click twice, and 0.375. Now let's say for coolness factors, we want this to be aligned. In other words, right now it's at sort of an arbitrary angle. Horizontal, vertical, and click one of the lines, and boom. It's all black now as well, you've noticed. It's four and a half inches long, E for extrude, click on it, 4.5, enter. Awesome, good news is I've got this hex piece. What's interesting is that the end, each end was turned down, but if we do a fillet, that's not what we have. We're gonna do this as a revolve. L for line. I'm gonna sketch a line on this plane. Don't know why it orients me that way. I would like to look at it this way. When I measure the end, it's a 3 8 inch piece of hex that's turned down on the end to about 0.3 inches. So what I'm gonna do, L for line, I snap a line right there in the center, and see how I, I have all these snap points. So if I hold down the control key, That'll place a line without any of the automatic constraints. See, like there, I'm getting a midpoint constraint. There, I get a coincident constraint. Uh, but the problem if I hold down Control key is it also won't snap it vertical, which I kind of like. So what I like to do is just create a line that's way too long. Hit D for dimension and type in 0.3 divided by 2 because we're on the radius. So I need a chamfer that intersects with that point, L for line drag a line, coincident, I want this line to be coincident with that, D for dimension, the d angle between the blue line and the vertical line is 135 or the opposite of 45 degrees. And now what I can do is just connect this, it doesn't even have to be perfect, notice by dragging over first over here, it picked up those two edges. So now I've got this pie shape. I made the triangle bigger, that way when we sweep the revolve, it catches everything. Now these are blue, which is because they're diff able to be sized differently. I don't really care, but I do like having things locked down. That way they accidentally don't move. So what I'll do is click fix, unfix, this little padlock icon here. One, two, they're green, now everything's locked down. S on your keyboard that pops up this search shortcut REV for revolve. Click revolve. What's the profile? It's this. What's the axis? It is my blue axis right here. Click that. And it automatically figures out that it is a cut, which is great. Click OK. And if I hit I to measure and I click right there, you can see we've got a 0.3 inch diameter end, which is perfect. And that's how this will work when you chuck it up in a lathe and turn that down. Other end is the same way, a little bit of a different angle. L for line, click here, reorient it. This one has the tapers down to, I'm gonna call it 0.22 inches, so. 0.22 divided by 2, and L for line, tapers back, make this perpendicular, make sure I've got that intersect, intersect, I don't see that dot anymore. I did it myself though, yeah, we're good. I need to set the angle, this one looks more like a 30 degree angle, or maybe 25. We'll fix the base and 
there, S, revolve. There we go. So interesting question, is this one component or two components? Well, Fusion 360, sort of the definition of a component is a discrete object in the real world. So when you purchase one of these, it is one component because the ice pick is pressed in or permanently affixed to the handle. I'm gonna make it in Fusion as two because I'm making the ice pick or buying the ice pick differently than I'm making or buying the base. And I may want to be able to make a drawing or a CAD model or cam up the base uh, separately. C for circle, click on the face, a center circle 0.156, that's the diameter of the base of the pick. E for extrude, click that, negative 0.75. I'm making up how deep that cavity is to press in the ice pick. He puts his name on the face, so we'll go sketch text on that face. I don't know what font he uses. Um, I'm just gonna click right here. The text stuff in Fusion 360 works, but it's not the best, so I would use a free program like Inkscape here, again, free to download, the link in the video description, and export as an SVG or DXF if you wanna do things like text around a curve. Click OK. So I have this text, I think I can actually hit E for extrude, extrude at negative point, say 05, 50 thou, not even 20 thou. <clears throat> that works, and that worked just fine. If you do ever have a problem with the text, go back in, edit the sketch, right click on your blue text, explode text. What that does, not far, far less exciting than it sounds. It changes it from text that I can double click on and edit it, and it changes it into vector lines or CAD lines, so curves and arcs and sweeps. So you can no longer change the R to a B or a T, but sometimes that gives you additional flexibility uh, or functionality that you need. Right click on the file name, new component, ice pick. These are about five inches long. L for line. I'm going to sketch a line on this plane. We're going to start it from back here. So I want to make use of this geometry. So hit P for project. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to project the circumference of the base circle onto my sketch. So it projects wherever it intersects, which a circumference only intersects a perpendicular plane at two points, the bottom and the top, if you will. And what that lets me do is it lets me use the base of those and they're purple, which means it's linked back to the body. So if I ever change the depth of this hole, it can update accordingly. That's pretty cool. For now, I, want to, I don't want to see the body, especially this text, it's noisy, it gets in the way. So use the light bulb, make it go away. I've got the lines that I need. L for line, turn the handle back on. What the dimension that I care about is not the, it's five inches from the face. So D for dimension, click that line, that point. We're gonna say 2.5, and the rest we're gonna have as an arc. We're gonna do this as a revolve, which means I need a center line to revolve around. So L for line, and I want it to be a center point line all the way out here. This is going to be five inches. S for your search, ARC for arc, three point arc. Click your first point, click the second point, and then it wants a third point. I usually create something that's wrong like this, and the way to make this look correct usually is a tangency. So I click tangent between the arc I just made and the line here. And that gives you that nice sweeping look, which is a very common thing in industrial design. S, R, E, V for revolve. I want to revolve this. I'll make sure, uh, turn my handle off, make sure I get everything. Ooh, there we go. See, I want to come all the way back here. My bad. There we go. S, revolve. Both of these things around that center line. Click OK. And there's my pick and handle. I can go back up and activate the top component. So there we go, handle and pick. Let's make the cover. Right click, new component, sheath. That spelled correctly? Looks funny. C for circle, 
I'm going to click on my origin plane right here, XY. And he uses a piece of six millimeter tubing. So I can click on this outside. And even though we're in inches, I can just type six mm. Notice I created the sketches way big. That's just easier for me to do it that way. And then the wall thickness was six millimeter minus 0.039 times two. And there's my tubing. Turn off the pick and the handle. It's about five and a half inches long. So E for extrude. So we'll type in negative 5.5 to go up with it. How do we make the ring at the end? So this is a separate part that's welded on. So in this case, we are going to keep it within the same component. I'm gonna do this a little differently. One option would be to do create torus, but I really don't use these solid model features here very often. I'm going to do C for circle, X, Z plane, and just out here, it's a four millimeter ring, so four millimeters. And I know that this is going to be in line with the origin, so horizontal, vertical. That keeps it in line, top to down. And the inside edge, so this point right here, should be in line with there. Tangent, click there, click there. Oops, sometimes it doesn't work, there it goes. Okay, great. Now this is where it's a little tricky. I need to revolve this around the center of this point here. And the inside diameter is 1.075. L for line, and start a line right here, dimension it, 1.075 divided by two. Click on it once, and hit X for construction. So that's the point that I need to revolve around, but you can't revolve around a point. You need an axis. So to create an axis, construct plane along path. What's my path? It's this one, and I'm just gonna drag it all the way to the end. So that gives me both a plane and a point, which would let me do construct axis through two planes. So I want the axis that intersects the plane we just made, as well as the X, Z plane right here. And so sure enough, now I've got an axis created right there. S, R, E, V for revolve. I'm gonna revolve this around my new axis. But instead of a cut, I'm gonna have it be a join. Click OK. And I can turn off this construction stuff. I don't need that visible. So one of the reasons I like doing it that way is this is probably how I assume how they look to Jimmy. Uh, he may braise them onto the very tip, uh, but it does look like there's a little bit of extra material right around here. So from a CAD engineering standpoint, this is acceptable, but let's say I wanted to use this as a render for marketing or on the website or promotion. I don't want to send this out. This looks terrible. So that lets me do is I can go back in and turn this sketch back on Sketch six, right click it down here, at the bottom of your screen, edit, L for line. Let's just sketch, I'm not sure how I wanna do this to be honest with you. Sketch a line up here, horizontal vertical. So I'll make this in line with that. And let's see here, plain, just having fun here. We've already got a line that way. Do a line this way. So now I've created another, I should have created another section here. Turn off the body, there we go, this little guy right here. That's what I wanted, so see that? Let's see what it looks like. Stop sketch, that fast forwards me to the end. So I've got my ring, S, R, E, V. Let's select this new profile around my axis is a cut, click OK, perf, well, perf, maybe perfect. Turn my axis off, turn my sketch off, visibility wise. So that already looks better. Let's see if I can now do a quick fillet on it. Yeah. Does the chamfer look better? 
yeah, this is not what, you know, it's a, it's a, a weld or braze that gets, I like that actually. It's a weld or a braze that gets, you know, buffed out. So I'm not as concerned with what this looks like. I just don't want it to look like the bottom half, which is, which is kind of crummy. So I'm actually going to delete my chamfer. And rather than recreate that sketch, what I can do is create mirror, change your pattern type from faces to features. And I'll do that revolve. Which one is it actually? Should it be just, should be this one around. My mirror plane is the, uh, let's see here, Y, Z. Okay, and that duplicates it to the bottom. Modify, I think we said chamfer looked better. One, two, 0.05, not that much, 0.02, 0.01, something like that. Click OK. Hit A for appearances. Go down here to metal, brass, polish, drag it up to the part. And now when you go to render, you've got something that looks a lot, this, this is real time quick rendering. You can actually go through the settings here and click render. And we've got something that looks pretty good. We'll go back real quick. Let's make the handles brass and the pick is probably like a stainless steel. How about that, folks? Hope you guys learned. Hope you enjoyed. See you next Friday. Take care.